The first ever Winter World Cup is upon us. So in this video, I'm going to be reviewing and ranking every single official World Cup poster from 1930 up to 2022. Now I've seen a few football YouTubers commenting on the designs of football kits and crest redesigns with comments like, oh, I like that, that's smart, mm, don't like that one. Well, I think as a graphic designer of 20 years experience, as well as a football fan, we can do a little bit better than that. So if you're a lover of visual culture, graphic design or football, let's go. Here's 1930 in Uruguay, the first World Cup. And we have here a real art deco style. We're coming out of the roaring 20s. And this type is really, really interesting. There's something unusual about it. Yes, it's not the most legible, but it has some personality to it. There's something you know, that's unique, that's of the time, it anchors it in that time. And I think even with the colour scheme, now we've got these primary colours, red, blue and yellow, but the tones match up into this sort of earthy tone across the colour scheme, so it doesn't look too primary. And I like the composition, like obviously this is stylized. it's not supposed to be a naturalistic illustration, it's graphical. And the way the keeper's body elongates, reaching up, towards the top corner to save the ball. It gives that feel of reaching within it. So I quite like that element of the composition. Although the overall feel may look a bit homemade, a bit crafty by today's standards, I think there's a lot to recommend this one. So I'm going to rank this one as knockouts. So we have these ranking stages here, winners, semi-finals, knockout stage, group stage, or did not even qualify. 1934 and Italy. Here we have something that is a lot more modern. I really like the type design here at the bottom with these sharp apexes on the type. That's really in, uh, just like that whole style that reminds me of like travel postcards from that era in Italy, in the Mediterranean. It looks a bit like, you know, the Cinzano, you know, font or something like that. And we have a more naturalistic looking football player looking down at the ball, about to strike the ball. And that leads you from the eye round to the ball, then, then like in a further arc, like down towards the type. And I think that's a nice little composition device. And then the way they've moved you know, some of the information here. And there's a good hierarchy, good principle as well with things like posters. If you have one large element, so we've got this main kind of illustration, then a medium sized element, we've got the headline here, which basically says world championships, right? And then the smaller type for the dates and the other bits of information. So that's a nice little uh, trick of scale to make these things work in a harmonious way and also we've got the same style with this stippling that comes through on the shorts on this illustration through onto these flags as well as the uh, carried through here so overall this is a strong poster I'm going to move this into the semi-final stage Next, we are going 1938 to France and we have a footballer here again represented in all three posters so far with the foot on the ball on top of the world. And that's quite a nice device how we have the globe and then the football, these two spherical devices together. So there's a nice graphic element to that. Again, like the colours in here, we've got lots of these deep earthy colours, reds and browns. And the type is interesting too. Again, this is sort of a more of an art deco here with um, the style of this type. But I'm not sure about these small caps here. So if we look at this height, the cap height uh, versus, we've got these small caps where the, the first letter is taller than the rest. And I don't, I don't like that. I don't get that. If they were just all one height, that would give a, a cleaner look to that. And the fact we introduced this other typeface here for the numerals at the bottom, I think that's just a little bit of a shame. Um, but overall, there's some things that work about this. It's basically a central axis composition. And 
I like the type design. I like the colors. And overall, this is pretty good. So I think we'll put this into getting through to the knockout stage. 1950 in Brazil. So again, with the composition here, the foot reaches across with the leg down to this bottom corner towards the ball. And that's a, a nice way to split the layout there. And it creates space in the corners for the rest of the type. The type, again, kind of similar to what we had uh, with the Italian type. We don't have the sharp apexes anymore, so it's not as distinctive in that way. But we're creating these little blocks of justified type here. There is something with the lineup. I don't know if it's just with this being an old scam, but this is leaning that way and that's leaning the other way. So I don't know what's going on there, but it, it might just be that it's because it's a very old document, but I think this is not quite straight and they've sort of lent that and I don't like that aspect to it. In fact, really what we need to see is more of a grid because here these are lined up justified on either side, but here at the bottom, we don't have that. So that's a strange thing going on here. The actual illustration, it's a bit cartoonish I think it's it's a bit convoluted, really, the way they've added all the flags onto this sock, and it doesn't make for the best graphical appearance. And having this background here kind of takes away the impact of the plane shape. But overall, there's some interesting compositional things going on. I think this is okay. I'd say maybe group stage. 1954 in Switzerland. We are expecting big things. For the non-graphic designers, this is the era when Swiss modernism took over the world, became known as the international style. And modernism throughout the 50s into the 60s and even 70s became the basis for corporate identities and a real order that was brought to design language. You might just know of things like the font Helvetica. You might have seen these grid type posters. We're expecting big things, but what do we get? Hmm. Not what we were expecting, maybe. We have this drawing, which is a very primitive style of artwork. And I understand that this is a stylized thing. And I do like the aspects of the net here, how the net is 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 moving, is the net is bulging. That's quite clever, but overall, I don't know why there's this yellow circle on top of the ball. Somebody might know. Is it just a reflection? Is it the sun? I'd make it to look more globe-like. I'm not really sure what that's for. But although this is stylized, I just think the goalkeeper, the white hat, these gloves here, they look like marigolds, you know, cleaning gloves that you would wear, with yellow plastic gloves, which is kind of odd you know for a goalkeeper so I just I don't feel this style totally works I do like the type at the bottom it's quite small here but how they've got this this time there's no small caps everything's on one line and they've put the date that little bit smaller so it just says championships of the world of football 1954 so I think that part works but overall this style of illustration does not feel like the right choice to me and doesn't really sell Swiss design. But the composition works, the type's good. I'm going to say group stage. Okay, next up, 1958 in Sweden. Hmm, what do you think of this one? There's a few strange things going on. So at the top, we've got this type, which is at an angle. We're in four languages here. Then this is straight but it's in three languages. So not quite sure, maybe because football is used in a few, but the type is ugly. This is not a good choice of typeface. When we've got something with only two fonts here, they almost just think, just use one font and bring more consistency to it. Maybe this one at the top, which is a condensed type, that would be more appropriate. Then we've got this wide track type here, and it's kind of ugly. It doesn't have the elegance that type designers graphic designers would recognize you know in classic fonts like a helvetica a universe a futura fonts which have stood the test of time so it's lacking a bit of elegance overall we've got these different styles we've got this shadowy footballer here some strange sharp angles 
uh, the way the hands go and things that this hair that this kind of curves over this foot and it's strange because this is solid and then we've got this soft edge here with a brush on this shadow and this is an un why would you have a shadow like this which is a puddle uh, you know is that supposed to be from the ball it it doesn't it doesn't translate properly this white outline for the ball we've got this scarf wrapped around with all the different flags it the illustration styles don't quite match up and with the types being over the place and the composition we've got this medium size element medium size element medium size element and there's there's not a proper flow to the layout so this is poor i'm definitely going to put this one as did not qualify 1962 in Chile. Composition wise, I don't mind this because we have some nice white space here, negative space, allows the composition to breathe. We've got the information here at the bottom. The largest thing is Chile 1962, so there's good prominence there. Don't mind this type, and again, it's set in this all caps condensed. It's common to a lot of these posters. And I kind of get the idea about like football going around, like being the moon going around the world, but it's lacking a bit of finesse to really sell itself as a poster. If this was maybe, you know, just in a slightly different position, maybe occupying more of a central position here and just had a little bit of finesse to it or it being at the side and we had more of a grid layout. So it was a bit more obvious what was going on here with this layout and what was supposed to line up where then that would make more sense so some some good ideas but not executed properly this one's going in the group stage so next we have 1966 in england who won that world cup and this is the official poster and we have here the flags in the form of a rosette going around the ball lots of people used to wear rosettes then even fans now you only tend to see them on political candidates so no one wants to be associated with them but I like the composition here, how this is angled. That gives that little bit of tension, a little bit of interest to the poster. If that was just straight vertical, it'd be a little bit boring. And again, we have a tall, narrow, all caps typeface, which has been a popular thing. And But I think it's quite attractive. It works quite well. It's quite distinctive. A little bit deeper ink traps here on this 66, we can see. And that creates a little unit there and again that is the largest thing 1966 world cup england so we've got a good hierarchy there i don't particularly like the style this very naturalistic style of the rosette and the ball i feel that could be a bit more graphical a bit more stylized and it would fit better with the sharp lines of this type and it just being this solid color type on a white background those two things don't quite chime together the England is also getting very close here to the flags. We've actually got the North Korea flag there. Remember, North Korea were in the, the World Cup in that year. And there's a couple of odd things. Why is finals just thrown over here? I'm not sure with like two in lowercase, but nothing else is in lowercase. Just little bits of inconsistency. And also the logo for this World Cup is just kind of pegged at the bottom, which is kind of a strange... Uh, logo we've got the fa logo on top of the jules Rimet trophy on top of a football with a roundel and then on top of the union flag this one's okay uh, nextly we had an alternative poster for this world cup so there maybe was two and this was the mascot world cup willy and again similar to the chile where we've got this negative space all through here and kicking the football it leads your eye up there i do like this type again and we've brought this to the bottom. So again, there's some good compositional elements here, but the styles, again, very naturalistic football, very cartoonish mascot. So you need consistency. There needs to be a congruence through your design so everything matches, everything appears like it's in the, the, the right place. Like if you had a, a royal palace and then you just put a big IKEA sideboard into it, it would look really wrong, out of place next to, you know, gilded, gold picture frames same with graphic design everything needs to look like it belongs together so i'd say for both of these england posters i'd say probably group stage for these next up 1970 in 
Mexico. So this is something now where we've gone to a much simpler graphical form for this. We have a different type of World Cup. It's the world, the football, sorry. It's the football that's based on these pentagons as opposed to the old, you know, brown leather long sections in the football. The thing that really stands out here is the type for the name of the tournament, Mexico 70. And we have this, it just looks 70s to me, where we have these strokes uh, within the middle of each of the characters and even the, the, the design of the type itself with these very rounded edges. I think that's very much of the era. So I really uh, am digging that. Not sure about the type underneath, you know, why is this space here that size? And then there's almost a bigger size. You'd, you'd almost think it should be the other way around. So the black type looks more like a unit together. And everything's in lowercase there, where it's all in uppercase here. And it, I'm just not quite sure why. It looks a bit strange, particularly with the dates, with these months being in lowercase. And and not sure about the margins. I think if this football was smaller and it came in a little bit to some margins somewhere around there, it would probably just have a, a better composition versus the type. But I think for the type alone, which is really cool, I'm going to put this into hmm, semi-finals. 1974 in West Germany. And here we have this very stylized footballer in motion and we have this kind of style of brush strokes that are very thick and visible here in this stylized uh, footballer and i think this uh, it kind of works the composition works on this field of black the football you're you know kind of moving along this axis and then just nicely typeset at the bottom again the title is very very prominent and then the detail here is smaller, a little bit blurry on our version. But overall, this compositionally works. I just think there's some elements with a footballer that could be a little bit better. Like it feels like this head here is just too rectangular. And uh, it looks a bit like a Star Wars droid or something like that. So that kind of lets it down slightly. But overall, I think there's... There's definitely some interest in this. Compositionally, it works, uh, and it keeps the rest of the poster simple so the artistic style of the illustration can come through. I'm going to put this one as knockout stage. 1978 we go to next in Argentina. And here we have maybe what we would have expected from Switzerland in the 1950s. We have this grotesque typeface, which is like a Helvetica style, a modernist type here for the headline and that is clearly legible because it's it's large enough it's the second largest thing on the poster even though it is going vertically and again that principle of the large image the medium sized headline and then the smaller information is in play and that really helps the composition work together this information here is nicely typeset this, I believe, is the logo for the World Cup. It's in the corner. And I do like this image. It's quite interesting, this like punch card style, these holes that have different sizes. I don't think that's essential to the image, but the overall composition, I think some of the joy of football, that moment of celebrating a goal, comes through here and it just lends itself to this composition. Restrained color scheme, just using a monochrome, everything blue, different shades of blue. We've got this purpley mid blue, the light sky blue, and then this very dark kind of black, off black. And that works. And it's also the, the colors of the Argentina national team playing the sky blue and white for the home kit, usually in a dark blue for the away. Overall, I think this is fantastic. This is a really good uh, poster. I'm going to put this as World Cup winners. That's definitely up there for me. 1982 in Spain. And this is something totally different. So from the last one where it was all about grids, it was all about these modernist fonts which have this very neutral utilitarian experience. Now we've got something which is very expressive. And this style, the type is brought into the illustration so they all form the same type where it says Spain at the top here, España. And this is 
like a style of like a Murrow. Is this actually one Murrow? It looks like possibly a signature. I should know. I went to the Murrow Institute in Barcelona, but it's definitely that kind of style with these black edges and then these colored sections. And then the information, you know, just simply at the top, at the bottom, sorry, in the proper scale. This feeling like a poster, this main illustration point, well, it is a poster, but like a like an art poster, you know, filling in that right proportion. So I really like the fact that it's it's expressive, it's different, it's something that's very much, you know, of the culture, of the place. It's not just generic for another tournament. And I think that's really cool. You maybe say there's not an the football reference isn't clear enough. Maybe it's there in this artwork, but it's just so abstract that without explanation doesn't really come through. But overall, I like how it's very unique. I'm going to put this as semi-finals. Next, we go to 1986 in Mexico. Now, how did Mexico have the World Cup 16 years after they had it the first time? I think there was a cancellation or something like that that led them to have it again. Now, again, we have this type which is split with a line through the middle like we had in 1970. It's become a little hallmark for them. Not quite as nicely executed. You know, we've got a very round C, but then we've got a sharp angled M the first few characters and so they don't match up as much in the same way but you know it's a cool stylized thing but i'm really not sure about this image this football you know really stands out it's just incongruous the fact that we would have something that looks modern in this very ancient setting it just doesn't work maybe you could just have put a shadow here of a ball to go with this shadow of this uh, man male figure that is here across it and I think just having this touristy photograph of the location doesn't say enough about the tournament it's a very bland postcardy type choice so I think this one doesn't work very well I'm going to put this as did not qualify now to 1990, the first World Cup that I remember, and this is in Italy. And I had high hopes for you, Italy. The 1934 poster was great, but this is a total dog's dinner. I mean, the type at the top is illegible. I can't read that black on this background. We have this kind of blown out black and white, inverted, almost looking picture of the Colosseum in Rome and again it's like they've just thrown in a landmark because they want to celebrate their country but then even worse than the Mexico we have a flat graphical illustration on top of a photograph with no perspective in it to make it looks like it even fits in that venue and it's just totally bizarre all these flags crammed in and these things just don't work together and if you kind of, if you squint, you know, or like really zoom out on this poster, it's just like a black and white splodge with a little bit of this sludgy color in the middle. Compositionally, it's got nothing to endear itself. Just this plugged in the center. This is definitely going straight into did not qualify. 1994 in USA. The ones who are going to be the hosts of the next World Cup along with Canada and Mexico. And again, we've gone to a completely different style here. So we've got this painted style. And again, the paint strokes and, and, and the splodges of paint, technical term, are very, very visible here. And I do like that it's very expressive. I like the colours, uh, that they're loud, although... It's a little bit too, like, you know, red, yellow, green, blue, kind of a bit obvious. If there was a bit more of a, a palette, a bit more of a color scheme for this, that, that grounded it a little bit more, it, it would be better. Like maybe the red, white, and blue of the USA could have been used for the whole thing. It's good to bring in some different styles. The composition works because the although the footballers, you know, maybe their head, the angle of the head's not, not great, but could be leaning up slightly but it leads you from the foot to the ball up to the title at the top th again the logo is just kind of hidden in the corner because it doesn't fit a, you know a clean sharp edged modern logo 
on this uh, style, which looks very, very, um, the human hand is very, very visible in the painting. And this person kind of over the, the world and the stylized USA flag above them, it kind of, it's a good idea and it's got some nice, it's nice and expressive, but there's some bizarre thing. Why have we got Saturn here just floating in these stars? I think it's just not quite executed right. So for this stage, I'm going to say knockout stage, which is maybe where the USA will get at the World Cup. 1998 in France. This was a good World Cup. Another completely different style. Very expressive. Now, some might see this as being a bit crafty, you know, kind of rudimentary. But I actually think I like the sort of expression to it, that this simple style. And it works. Not a lot of interesting things compositionally, just title at the top, location and date at the bottom, and then big poster in the center. But it, it feels French. It feels expressive. It feels artistic and lively. And I think for that reason, it works. So for this one, I am going to put it as knockouts as well. We got up early in the morning to watch this, the Korea and Japan World Cup in 2002. Now we have brush strokes again, but these more look like the kind that were done in a computer program, sort of simulating this. Now, maybe not. Maybe this is, you know, scanned or photographed from, you know, an artwork. But the way these brushes are done, they look like they were kind of drawn in Adobe Illustrator or something. They've done a stylized version of this logo the official logo for the, the year, the tournament, here as the center circle. And the composition, it moves from this bottom corner and merging with the perspective up to the top, leading your eye towards the type, which works. But this humanist typeface, I'm not a big fan of. I don't think it has much to redeem itself. It just looks very default for the era. And I don't particularly like that. And again, this doesn't quite have anything particular enough about it it just looks like it was created you know in adobe illustrator without you know a big really idea behind it it's just a football pitch in a sense of perspective not great i would say group stage next up 2006 in germany and not only does this have one of the worst logos ever of any world cup i mean we have this ugly display type which just has no elegance to it these smiley faces, it's a mess. It's just got some bizarre things going on, like where is the alignment? So this is compositionally aligned here. So you can see these things don't line up, FIFA World Cup in 2006, but then this 2006 lines up with the bottom type, but we have 2006 repeated below each other. It's just completely redundant. And then although all this information's at the bottom and then you know we've got the large thing at the top, so it has that traditional poster composition it just looks plonked on top of these stars it doesn't look like it it belongs there like it's meant to be there and this idea of a football in the stars is just super cheesy visually and this one just needs to get in the bin straight away did not qualify 2010 saw the first world cup in africa and that's represented on this poster here where the face of this figure here forms into the shape of the continent of Africa, particularly more detailed at the bottom, where, of course, we have South Africa. And I think that's a, a clever little device. The type here, again, is something which looks like it's more in keeping, like it belongs. It's more of an African style. They haven't used a, a European typeface. If they're going to use universe here or some old type like Garamond or some old serif that will look a bit bizarre so that works and it's just compositionally aligned within this shape the fact that the figure is looking up towards the ball it just feels like not quite right the balance this is going off the edge a tiny bit on the outline this goes off more and the amount of space that's here I feel like proportionally this could be pulled together a little bit more maybe this whole thing just moves down a little bit and then again we've got the logo sort of plonked in the corner which is again a pretty terrible it's very low res on this poster but 
I really do not like that logo. But overall, the idea here is very good. Some parts of it are executed well, just needs a slight compositional tweak. I'm going to put this as knockout stage. 2014 in Brazil, last three. And again, we have this map idea. In between these legs here, we have vaguely the shape of Brazil, the outline of the country. And we have all these different illustrative elements. We see like the nature, the wildlife, the plant life from the area. You know, it's like, looks like people sort of celebrating you know an armadillo <laughs> so they've tried to bring in elements from the local area but i feel like it's a little bit forced i particularly don't like the type i just think this is ugly the way it's been done and again it doesn't have any elegance to it although it does sort of fit in with this this style like we talked about with the african one it's just not executed uh, in a proper way so <sighs> I feel like they're just forcing the map idea and it sort of takes away a little bit from how the composition could could work together. And again, no one seems to hear all these logos or really tie them in. They're just thrown into the corner. So again, some strong ideas, but not quite executed right. I'm going to say group stage for this one. 2018 in Russia. Here we have really interesting compositional work. So we have the ball here where things emanate, emanate from or your eye is led up through the player towards this ball, which is also, you know, with the, the Russian map overlaid, you know, the globe and the ball, that idea that we see all through these uh, posters. This looks like Lev Yashin, the famous uh, Russian goalkeeper who used to wear these huge black gloves so although they do look kind of like um he's about to uh, wade through the sewers or something they did actually wear these kind of huge gloves and so i think that icon idea but i really love how these lines here they look like you know they're like lines out from the sun but they also look like the lines on a football pitch with this green circle underneath the circle mirrors the circle in the top it's basically just really nice composition even though you know i don't speak russian this is nicely typeset here. Again, the logo is incongruous. It's of a different style, but they, they've managed to place it on this yellow field here. And overall, this is just a really well done composition, the kind of European style that you would expect. So leaving aside any feelings I might have about the Russian World Cup, which you can probably guess, it should have never been there, graphically, this is fantastic. This is a World Cup winner. And the last one, Qatar 2022. And this is created by a Qatari artist, a local artist. And she's known for this particular style, this type style here with the, it looks like ink and her typography. And she also displays a exclusively black and white aesthetic in her artwork. And that's all on display here in this poster. Now, I like that. It brings in a human element. It brings some style into the design, this type design. And black and white can be really, really stylish. I'm a sucker for it, but it doesn't really work here. I like the creative as well of the waving of the headscarf. Apparently, this is something that fans do in the region when a goal is scored. But because it just fills this space here at the bottom, it doesn't really give that compositional feel. It really would want to be larger here and really take over the feel of the poster. But what we have instead is this stack where we've got things just stacked on top of each other, which is just a really basic way of comp compos doing a composition. You know, there's no sense of a grid. There's no sense of moving the eye around the layout. And then again, the logo slapped into the bottom corner which i don't like the logo either and i think really because it's it's very gray it just lacks you know any feel like if we were to just blur this thing out and just see you know how this begins to look we've just got like a gray splodge and that's not going to you know create an impact there's no like nice contrast as you you know see a poster that I, I saw it in a a huge airport terminal 
It's not going to create that impact. The football here particularly stands out. I mean, it's the only, apart from the little detail on the logo, it's the only non, you know, monochrome, black, white, gray element with this maroon colors. But the thing is, footballs like this haven't been used in the World Cup for decades. You know, what was it, the 70s, 80s? This style of World Cup uh, of football. So it just looks like really out of date. And it looks like it's just plonked there for the sake of let's make this football related. Like if we were just to hide this, let's do a quick version of this in Photoshop to just hide this football. Then what we have is you can see that the football is not integral to the composition. It almost works better without that. You could almost just make this bottom part larger and create a little bit more of an interesting composition by doing this kind of thing that's very quickly so the football just thrown on there it's just an afterthought for context and it really lets down the composition of this poster something like the ink huge in the background or overlaid or interacting in some way with the idea of somebody waving the headscarf the same creative could have been executed a lot better i'm going to put this one as group stage for that reason okay so here's our final result what do you think do you agree with my selections which one of yours would be at the top let me know down in the comments and until next time enjoy the world cup